An actor might be replaced in a television series due to schedule conflicts, lackluster chemistry, behind-the-scenes politics, or even death. Forgotten or not, there's drama behind the curtain. It's New York City in the early 80s. Christine Cagney is a modern single woman and a former fashion model raised in a comfortable middle-class home. Mary Beth Lacey is a no-nonsense working mom from the neighborhood. Together, they are beat-styling cops. They patrol the mean streets of midtown Manhattan while fighting against institutional sexism in their own ranks. Cagney and Lacey had a passionate fan base that twice saved it from cancellation. These are women, Macy and... Lacey, uh, sir. Cagney, Inspector. Stars Tyne Daly and Sharon Glass dominated the Lead Actress Emmy category for the entire six-year run of the series. But Glass wasn't the first actress cast as Cagney, or even the second. The series began with a TV movie starring Daly and MASH star Loretta Swit. When Swit was unavailable for the show, Meg Foster was cast in her place. But after six episodes, Glass took over the part. In a wide-ranging 2008 interview, series producer Barney Rosenzweig revealed the reason for Foster's departure was one of compatibility. Her performance was too similar to what Daly was creating as Lacey. He explained, It became Lacey and Lacey. At the time of the recasting, however, Rosenzweig gave a much different rationale when interviewed by TV Guide, that viewers found Foster not feminine enough, and that together she and Daly read as lesbians, an apparently distasteful situation to viewers in 1982. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. So goes the famous opening narration of the A-Team, super producer Stephen J. Kennell's 1980s action series about a quartet of Vietnam vets who work as mercenaries in the Los Angeles underground, taking the kinds of suicide missions that no one else is bold or crazy enough to accept. The series stars 60s leading man George Papard as Hannibal Smith, the leader of the group, Dwight Schultz as pilot Howlin' Mad Murdock, Rocky III breakout star Mr. T is all B.A. Baracus, B.A. stands for Bad Attitude, and Battlestar Galactica star Dirk Benedict as Master of Disguise Faceman Peck. But the first time around, Faceman had a different face altogether. In the show's pilot episode, Peck is played by Love Boat star Tim Dunnigan. The issue with Dunnigan, appropriately enough, was his face. Though technically old enough to have served in Vietnam, it was decided that, in Dunnigan's own words, he was too young and too tall for the role. Benedict, who had apparently been Cannell and co-creator Frank Lupo's first choice, was cast and played the part for the rest of the series. The Law & Order franchise is no stranger to inventive solutions for temporarily unavailable cast members. Law & Order Special Victims Unit premiered in 1999, the first franchise spin-off. The series follows the dedicated detectives of the sex crimes-focused Special Victims Unit and delves further into the personal lives of its leads than the original show ever does. This is especially true for Mariska Hargitay as Detective Olivia Benson and Christopher Maloney as her volatile partner, Elliot Stabler. In 2006, it was announced that Hargitay was taking a short leave of absence from the show to accommodate the final months of her pregnancy. In her place, the show brought in Connie Nielsen as Detective Danny Beck, partnering her with Stabler for a six-episode run in the middle of season eight. Her character was clearly meant to be temporary. Still, some fans weren't pleased by her presence. In a 2020 interview, Nielsen said she still gets Danny Beck hate mail. Tony Shalhoub's defective detective in the comedy series Monk was always socially awkward with a touch of obsessive-compulsive disorder. Various flashbacks through the seasons and a visit from his brother confirmed that his conditions were always present within him. But the moment that turned his life upside down to the point that he had to leave the San Francisco Police Department and hire a nurse to assist him was his wife's death. His wife, Trudy, was murdered by car bomb. Monk begins after Trudy's death, but the mystery surrounding it is the show's primary ongoing story, reaching from the first episode all the way to the last. In the first two seasons, Trudy, played by Stelina Rusic, is represented by a few silent flashbacks and photographs on Monk's mantle. Starting with Season 3's flashback-heavy episode, Mr. Monk and the Game Show, however, Trudy is played in flashbacks by Melora Hardin, an actress probably best known for playing Jan Levinson in The Office. And I have to thank you for that other thing, too. You know, marrying me. Oh, look. <laughs> You're welcome. Harden would appear a few more times, most notably in the two-part series finale where her murder is finally solved. Oddly, as the series went on, the props department used photos of both Rusich and Harden interchangeably and even sat them next to each other in Monk's house. Generational trauma is at the heart of David Chase's landmark series The Sopranos, the HBO mob drama that in many ways revolutionized television, opening the medium up to a more mature, serialized mode of storytelling. Tony Soprano is a New Jersey mob boss who is profoundly depressed and dissatisfied with his life in ways that he can't articulate. Much of his trauma can be traced back to his mother Livia and Uncle Junior, as well as the ghost of his father, Johnny Boy. Beginning with season two, Tony's wayward sister Janice arrives on the scene. 
She's dealt with her tumultuous upbringing by moving west and embracing New Age philosophies, but can't help but get drawn back into their life. Tony and Janice aren't the only Soprano siblings, however. There's one more, a little sister who got out and stayed out, Barbara, played in a handful of episodes by Nicole Burdett. Barbara lives out of town and is rarely involved with the Soprano family business. The character is absent from seasons 3 and 4, then returns for 10 episodes in the show's last two seasons, this time played by Danielle DeVecchio. Even with her increased presence in the series' final run, Barbara was never a major character, and her role was by far the smallest in the family. NBC's Hannibal, based on the best-selling novels by Thomas Harris, was unlike any show on network television. Baroque, gorgeous, and gruesome, series creator Brian Fuller crafted a bloody thriller for three seasons that was beautiful to watch, even if you were watching through your fingers. This is the nightmare that followed him out of his dreams. Centered around haunted FBI profiler Will Graham and a psychiatrist, the erudite gourmet Hannibal Lecter, the series follows Graham's attempts to catch various serial killers and protect his own fragile sanity, while Lecter works to keep Graham and his FBI boss Jack Crawford from discovering that he is a brutal cannibalistic killer himself. Season 2 works in elements from Harris' sequel Hannibal, introducing meatpacking heiress Margot Verger and her sadistic, incestuous brother Mason, played by Michael Pitt. Hannibal punishes Mason for his abuse of Margot and for his general impoliteness by drugging him and forcing him to mutilate and eat his own face. In Season 3, Mason returns for revenge, paralyzed from the neck down and horribly disfigured. I would like you to begin arrangements for Dr. Hannibal Lecter to be eaten alive. But the actor underneath the prosthetics is not Pitt, but actor Joe Anderson, as Pitt declined to return to the role after season two. Premiering on NBC the same year as Hannibal with a somewhat similar premise was The Blacklist. James Spader stars as Raymond Red Reddington, a master criminal who's evaded capture for decades. Reddington turns himself into the FBI in exchange for immunity, promising to help the Bureau track down the world's most dangerous criminals, his blacklist. But of course, there's a catch. Reddington will only work with rookie profiler Elizabeth Keene. While the series has a case of the week structure, with Red and Keene bringing down one illegal operation or another, the central mystery of Reddington's true identity and his connection to Liz power the show through ten high intrigue seasons. A major clue to the mystery of both Red and Liz's backgrounds dropped with the introduction of Brian Dennehy's character Dominic Wilkerson in season three. As a former KGB agent posing as a retired systems analyst, Dom has a long, messy history with Red, one that somehow intersects with Liz's own background. After a handful of appearances through the years, Dom becomes integral to the show's ongoing storyline in Season 7, but producers were thrown a tragic curveball when Dennehy passed away in April 2020. Rather than rework the upcoming season's scripts, the powers that be decided to recast the role with actor Ron Raines, who played Dom for three episodes in Season 8. Sometimes a show recasts a role due to the death of an actor, but other times it's due to the death of the show itself. That was the case with All Rise, the CBS courtroom drama that premiered in 2019, in which Simone Missick starred as Lola Carmichael, a former prosecutor turned Los Angeles County's newest judge. I've been in court before. I know how this works. You think you know, but you don't. Not yet. The series followed the ins and outs of her daily caseload, as well as the lives of the men and women who worked at the courthouse, her fellow judges, her old prosecutor colleagues, clerks, bailiffs, reporters, and more. Lola's husband, FBI agent Robin Taylor, was played for the first two seasons by Todd Williams. The show was canceled by CBS in May 2021. Several months later, however, it was saved from oblivion by the Oprah Winfrey Network, and a third and final season aired on OWN in 2022. Instead of asking the cop why I was being zip-tied, you asked me what I did wrong. Season 3 took place a year after the events of Season 2, which saw Lola have a baby and lose her judgeship after defending an innocent woman from arrest. Most of the original cast returned for the final season, with the exception of Williams, who had booked the Amazon Young Adult series Panic. As a result, actor Christian Keyes took over as Robin for season three. Each season of the Breaking Bad prequel Better Call Saul begins with an enigmatic black and white sequence following the gray, paranoid life of Jimmy McGill, formerly known as New Mexico criminal lawyer Saul Goodman, now living as Cinnabon manager Gene Takovic after the explosive events of the final season of Breaking Bad. Starting in Season 3, however, those opening scenes coalesce into an ongoing story as a panic attack puts Gene in the hospital. Season 4 begins with Gene's cab ride back from the hospital, where his driver has an Albuquerque isotopes decal on his mirror and keeps shooting glances at his passenger. Season 5 reveals that the driver, Jeff, played by Don Harvey, does indeed recognize Gene as Saul, but his motivations remain unclear. The sixth and final season foregoes the black and white scenes until the final three episodes, where Gene decides not to run again, but to confront Jeff and neutralize him via an old-fashioned slip-in-Jimmy con game. 
For these final episodes, however, Harvey was not available due to his commitment to the HBO series We Own the City. Pat Healy stepped into the role. Jeffy, this is Mr. Takovic. Call me Gene. Harvey's original take had a hint of menace, while Healy's was more of a sad sack divorcee, living with his mother and desperate for a taste of the Saul Goodman lifestyle. Law & Order and its spin-offs have had no shortage of cast turnover over the decades since its 1990 premiere. Part of this is baked into the premise of the show. Detectives and attorneys come in and out on a regular basis, and the departures are explained by transfer, retirement, arrest, or even death. The eras of the show come to be defined by who's running the two separate but equally important groups in the criminal justice system. Seasons 4 through 6 encompass Jill Hennessy's turn as Assistant District Attorney Claire Kincaid. A search warrant with this? You can't be serious. Toward the end of Hennessy's run on the show, she appeared in character as Kincaid on a 1996 episode of Homicide Life on the Street. While it's not exactly a Law & Order spin-off, it existed in the same television universe and occasionally shared characters, most memorably Richard Belzer's detective John Munch. Filming Homicide on location in Baltimore, however, meant that Hennessy missed a few days of filming the Season 6 Law & Order episode Corpus Delicti. Luckily, she had a novel solution to this problem. Her identical twin sister Jacqueline could step in as Kincaid for a few background courtroom shots. 